Hi Audio Geeks and welcome back to the channel. This is Audio Fixation, the friendliest audio channel here on YouTube. Now iFi Audio has been busier than ever this year, updating some of their most popular products such as the Zendak which we looked at earlier this year and also releasing some new stuff such as the little portable amp, the Go Blue, along with the Zen Stream uh, again which we looked at earlier this year and we've got an upcoming video on the Go Blue as well by the way. But now it's time for one of its most popular products, the portable DAC and amp combo known as the Hip DAC to get a 2021 refresh. It's important to mention that i5 very kindly sent me this particular unit for review, but they've had no input into the review process. Now the Hip DAC V2 is a little bit more expensive than the predecessor and costs around £189 here in the UK. The predecessor can currently be had on Amazon for £139, which I think is great value. So is the V2 worth the upgrade? Let's take a good look at it. So first of all, let's check out what's new with version 2. And the most striking difference, of course, is the new color scheme. So gone is a rather lovely blue from the version 1. And what we have instead is an equally gorgeous bronze aluminium enclosure. Now, I personally preferred the blue, I think but I guess I could grow to love the bronze as well over time. Other than that, the external design is very similar, resembling as it does the same compact hip flask style enclosure. Now up front, you get the same dual output, so you get the 4.4 millimeter balanced output there and the single-ended 3.5 mil output. You get that lovely tactile analog volume knob, the potentiometer, which has the same clicky on off action and just enough stiffness to make sure you're not accidentally going to whack the volume up too high. There are a couple of LEDs around the volume pot and as you can see they will glow to indicate the sample rate of the file that's playing. They'll glow a number of different colors as is detailed here in the rather helpful leaflet that comes with it. Also up front you get the uh, X base button there and the power match which increases the output power a little bit for example if you're using over ear headphones hard to drive over ear headphones like, like planar magnetics at the back we've got the same dual USB setup so you got USB-C here which is used solely for charging not for connecting audio sources that's done via the female USB-A adapter here and if you are plugging it into an iPhone, you'll need the camera kit adapter, which just plugs straight in like that and then into your iPhone. Um, this, of course, doesn't come with a hip DAC. It's an extra that you need to get from Apple. I think it's a ripoff. It's like 29 quid or something like that. You can correct me if I'm wrong. What you do get is a USB-C to USB-A connector uh, along with another USB-A to USB-A connector so you can easily hook it up to Android phones the iPad here which we'll do in a minute um, and laptops regardless of whether it's got USB-C like this one or a USB-A connector you also get a little USB-C charging cable as you can see the connectors fit nice and snug I don't think there's any danger of them pulling out now the battery inside this thing is a 2200 milliamp hour affair which iFi reckons will get you through eight hours of listening. And in my few weeks with this device, I would say that that seems fair. It does seem to last for a very decent amount of time in between charges. And the great news is that you can charge and listen at the same time. Most of the upgrades on the V2, however, involve the innards of the device. So iFi have employed a new XMOS controller chip, which as you can imagine, is faster and allows full MQA rendering for what it's worth. So that means that the HipDAC V2 can do the full MQA unfolding process rather than relying on software. Now non-MQA support is there for up to 24-bit 384 kHz PCM files and 256 DSD. You also get a new crystal clock to reduce jitter and thankfully they've stuck with the same Burr Brown DAC which I'm a big fan of. Overall, I would say that these are fairly incremental upgrades over the earlier model, but how does it sound when it's all put together? 
On my test setup, utilize the Hi-Fi Man Sundaras and the HD650s in terms of full-sized cans, along with a range of IEMs, including my beloved Shaw SE846s. You know I'm a massive fan of these IEMs. The source was generally my iPad Pro, which you can see here, connected via the USB-C cable and playing a real range of different stuff. I've been listening to all my favorite albums from 2021. Watch out for a video on that coming up soon. So yeah, it's been a real varied bunch of music. So first things first, once again, this is an extremely powerful battery operated amp that will blow your eardrums if you're not careful, especially if you turn on power match. For me, it's too powerful an amp for sensitive IEMs like the Shores here, unless you use something like the i5 volume attenuator. I think it's called something silly like the ear buddy or something. Yeah, there we go, ear buddy. Um, so yeah, you have to plug your ear buddy in first before plugging your IEMs in, and that way you'll probably preserve your hearing. However, all this power on tap means it has no trouble driving difficult beasts like the Hyperman Sundaras. And just like its predecessor, I find the HipDAC V2 and the Sundaras to be an incredible synergistic pairing. In terms of the sound signature then, on the whole, I'd say that this is a slightly more neutral sounding amp than its predecessor, which I found to lean towards the warmer end of the spectrum. So whilst there still is plenty of bass here, I think they've dialed the mid-bass down a bit, so it's a slightly leaner presentation than the V1. I like the change actually, as it really makes the mids shine in this model. There is just enough bass weight to the lower mids, giving instruments and male vocals plenty of texture and body. The upper mids are also pleasing, and there's no hint of harshness and no fatigue when listening for extended periods. The treble is, if anything, slightly more detailed than the V1, but we might be straying into placebo territory here. I'm always a bit wary of making such definitive pronouncements when there are subtle differences. I suspect the treble sounds better just because the overall frequency response is slightly more neutral and the highs come across as crystal clear. Look, without getting too bogged down in technical hoo-ha, all you need to know is that the HipDAC V2 sounds really clean, enjoyable, and downright musical with a real sense of a coherent performance. You will hear plenty of details, and instrument separation is excellent. The soundstage is very deep, but not particularly wide. Oh, and we have to mention that bass boost button is right here. Look, you can't miss it. Once again, i5 pulled off the trick of adding some natural sounding bass emphasis via an analog circuit rather than digital manipulation. It adds some mid bass weight without overwhelming the rest of the mix and works particularly well for jazz, classical or rock music. I find it a bit too much with pop or electronic music. However, turn it on whilst listening to some Yo-Yo Ma and it adds a real visceral punch to something like the Bach cello concertos much like being close to the stage during a classical concert. How about use cases? Well, unlike the much more compact BTR5, I'm unlikely to pop this into my pocket and use it while I'm actually on the move. However, if I'm sat in a coffee shop or at my desk at work, or even during a long rail journey, it's perfect. I love the analog volume pot. It perhaps is the unit's best feature, although you very rarely have to turn it up very much to get to really listenable volumes. Now, here comes the all-important question. Is this worth the upgrade over the version 1? For me, no. I think the version 1 was a terrific product, and the Delta here is small in terms of sound quality improvement. Small, but not non-existent. The added MQA support doesn't really matter to me either. If you're thinking of buying a hip deck, though, and haven't got one already, I do think that the V2 is subtly better in every way than the V1. Overall, however, there's no escaping the fact that this is another absolute winner from iFi and well worthy of an audio fixation silver award. Now, if it was £30 cheaper at £159, I think it would have been a clear gold medal. Hint, hint, iFi. So, well done, iFi, for another terrific product, and thank you for watching another video from Audio Fixation. Stay tuned for more around the festive period. Take care, guys.